One of the many things that will help anyone planning to do their own cooking is to grow a garden. Nothing is more satisfying than to plant and tend and grow your own fruits and vegetables. One of the easiest plants to tend and grow for a beginning gardener is the summer squash, also known as a zucchini. Once you can get the plant going and thriving, you'll be able to harvest quite a few vegetables that are great for sautéing. One thing that anyone will tell you is ever grown zucchini is no matter how vigilant you are at picking the fruits of this plant daily, you will come out one day to find one of these ninja edible baseball bats sitting there mocking you. Where's the... It's too big to slice up and cook and too soft to take to the ballpark. Sometimes these things come up by the come by the dozen, leaving you standing there in your garden wondering where the thing was hiding and how did you miss this monstrous thing? Well, only really have one of three choices. Try to give it away, chuck it, or try to do something with it. It Go. seems to me a waste to just throw out something that is perfectly edible, but just, just become on the unwielding side. Here is my suggestion. Don't fret. Make zucchini bread. This recipe is good for almost any squash, but works best with zucchini and pumpkin. What this bread really is, is a kind of spice cake. A spice cake is modern speak to try and overcome the bad rap that has grown up around what used to be called fruit cake. Before that word scares you off, please let me point out that banana bread, carrot cake, and most kinds of muffins are also technically fruit cakes. Yes, what we are about to make is a kind of fruit cake, and what makes it even better is it's a great way to get kids to eat their vegetables. The most important part of any spice cake is the spices that you use to make it. Cooking is a lot like a computer. Crap in, crap out. So one of the most important things to start with is to make sure that you have as high a quality spices as possible. The closer to whole spices you can find, the better. Of course, the most with most stores, that may not be possible. Bear in mind, however, that you can always order direct from off the internet. Just make sure that you look for a good, reputable source. Looking for the best ingredients is important for any nuts, dried fruits, and other additions to the bread. Do not be afraid to pay extra for, for nuts and fruits. One unsatisfactory ingredient, and you will make the bread less than its true potential. When it comes to nuts, the closer to freshly shelled nuts are the better. Shelling these nuts can be a chore, but all the work is worth the effort. The next important thing in the case of nuts, like walnuts and pecans, 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 whatever, is to roast your nuts after shelling them and add a little bit of extra flavor in the toasting process. Spread the nuts out on a sheet pan like this and cook them in the oven for 350 degrees until they just start to smell nutty. If you want to improve the caramelization of the nuts, spray them with cooking spray. Check the nuts after the first five minutes and every minute afterwards. I must warn you, these can go from perfect to ah, ah, burned in moments. So please pay attention to your nuts. Remember, when cooking anything, measuring everything before you start always makes everything easier. Mise in place, mise in place, and win the race. Now, if now how you mix this together is using something called the muffin method. Fitting as a muffin is just a personal spice cake. First mix together all your wet ingredients. That's your eggs. eggs, and your oil.
combine well. Now this also includes the sugar. For a richer flavor, use brown sugar instead of white sugar. Once everything is well mixed together, now mix in the shredded zucchini. Notice we're not adding any other moisture to this other than the eggs and the oil. That's because all the moisture in this bread will come from our zucchini. Now stir into your batter your dry ingredients. to do this is with a sifter. stir in well. There's a tradition that when you mix a cake like this, everyone in the household should hold the handle and help you stir. This probably has to do with the fact that they hadn't invented electric mixers yet. <laughs> That's zucchini bread. Once the dry ingredients are mixed in, now is the time to add any nuts, raisins, or chocolate chips. Just fold these in gently. Remember, when it comes to these additions, almost anything is something you can add. The sky is the limit. Don't add more than two to four ounces worth, though. You don't want to overwhelm your batter. This recipe can be instantly used to make pumpkin bread. Just put in the same amount of shredded pumpkin as you use for the zucchini. This also, the same applies for banana bread. Use four mashed bananas instead of your vegetables. How to keep a cake from sticking to a pan is actually pretty simple. Take some grease or Crisco or shortening and grease the pan. Thoroughly coat all the edges, especially making sure you get the corners. And make sure you get the bottom. And especially the bottom of the pan. That way, it will not stick. That's step one. Step two, after you've greased the pan, is you need to coat this with a layer of flour. Just put some flour in there and shake it around till everything's all covered. And then shake off the extra. It's as easy as that. Bake in the oven at 350 to 375 degrees for 55 to minutes, 55 minutes to one hour.
children in order to check the red. At this point it should be done. However, it's best to know for sure. This is done by taking a toothpick and sticking it in the middle of the loaf. If it comes out clean, like that, this is done. If the toothpick is clean, this tells you that uh, the bread is done. If it is not, it's still sticky or batter is sticking to it. That means the middle isn't done yet. You need to put it back in for about five more minutes and then check it again. And do this until the toothpick comes out clean. That's how you will know. After you've turned the bread out onto a, onto a, a rack to cool, well, the question, the question is, what do you do with it? Of course, eating is one choice, but you probably will make more than two or more loaves. So the question is, how do you store it? Well, it's actually very, very easy. Wrap the bread in plastic wrap. Use two layers and thoroughly wrap it so that you get a nice seal around the outside. Wrap it one direction and then wrap it in the opposite direction so that all edges are sealed. That seals out the air so you can freeze this. Once you have the bread sealed in plastic, the next thing to do is wrap that in foil. Wrap it with one layer that is sufficient. The plastic keeps the air and the moisture in the bread. The foil protects it from light. also keeps it from getting freezer burnt. Now, last and most important step, identify what this is and give it a date. Uh, otherwise you'll have one brick and you'll have to say, okay, what's brick A and what's brick B and do I dare open it? I'll show that. Cut. Start at the beginning. Yes, yeah, start at the beginning. But can I have my little zucchini back? Not the big one, the little one. Little? Yes, where'd the little one go? I nothing but the little one. Yes, you did. You knocked it on the floor. Give it a good wrap in heavy-duty foil. In heavy-duty foil. <laughs> 